Dickheads, I'm your chunky messiah, Ethan, and I'm just here with a, kind of a tangent video, a bit of an addendum video, I guess, to uh, the rambling guide to Vampire the Masquerade V20. This, of course, is V5. I don't have a book for V20. I just have PDFs. And PDFs do not make for good visual aid. This time, uh, as I said in the last video where I talked about the factions, uh, an introduction to how the factions behave, the th big three, the Camarilla, Anarx, and Sabat in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, uh, oh, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, in the world of Vampire the Masquerade. Um, as I said in that one, uh, this time I'm going to be talking about the Anarchs specifically. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to be answering a question which is in the title almost certainly, but it's something that I have been asked um, a surprising amount of times by a surprising number of people. Uh, it's come up uh, in multiple comments I've gotten on the you know, various videos I've made about Vampire the Masquerade, um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines playthroughs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've been asked it when I've streamed stuff before, I've been asked it on Discord. Um, I've been asked it a lot by a lot of people. And that question is, Ethan, why do you hate the Anarchs? Because I do. Um, I do not care for the Anarchs as a faction in Vampire the Masquerade. Um, I think that they are annoying. I think that they are hypocritical. I think that they are stupid and ill thought out. Um, and I just kind of despise them. Now, I should point out, um, I am going to talk about why I hold these opinions, um, I should point out that when I'm talking about the Anarchs, I am specifically talking about the ones who essentially hold to Anarch principles, not to the, uh, not about the ones who are Anarchs, just essentially because they're saying, fuck the police, because that is a solid contingent of vampires. They don't like being told what to do, and that is more or less the only reason they class themselves as Anarchs, or even in V5, um, they've just been declared Anarchs by the Camarilla, in which point, you know, can't hold it against them. They were just declared Anarchs at one point when the Camarilla got really scared and paranoid and uh, stopped just letting people straight into the club. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very specifically talking when I talk about the Anarchs. I'm talking about people like, again, to use Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines as an example, I'm talking about Skelter, I'm talking about Damsel, I'm talking about Nines, and I'm talking about the people who believe as they do, people who are kind of dyed in the wool, um, specific followers of Anarch principles. Now, I did kind of give a bit of an introduction as to what the Anarchs are uh, in the last video, and I should say, as I'm going into this, I'm assuming you have at least a vague knowledge of what the Camarilla is, because almost the thing that defines the Anarchs is that they are opposed to the Camarilla, but in an incredibly weak way. The Camarilla, um, as I mentioned in the last video, and as I will go into more detail about in future when I do a video specifically talking about them, uh, are essentially the uh, vampire government. You know, they are the guys who make the rules, they're the guys who enforce the rules, and they are the guys who declared all vampires members of the Camarilla and have started imposing those rules on everyone. Um, the Anarchs are more or less a response to that, um, rejecting their rules, not necessarily going to outright war, but kind of banding together in the hopes that they can stop the Camarilla from uh, forcing their views and their laws on them. The problem is... The Sabat also oppose the Camarilla, but unlike the Anarchs, the Sabat um, oppose them for various reasons. For one, they oppose them philosophically because the Sabat hate elders, the Camarilla props up elders as kind of an inherent part of its uh, hierarchical pyramid scheme of a structure. Um, which is quite amusing, actually. The Tremere, I believe, are specifically called the Pyramid, and the Tremere are very powerful in the Camarilla. Um, yeah, one of the uh, founding clans of the Camarilla, one of the high clans as well, the Tremere, even though no one trusts them. Um, but yeah, the Sabat hate them philosophically, and the Sabat um, kind of have a justification for that. Um, and they just fundamentally believe the world should be run in a completely different way, or the vampires should be should be operating in a completely different way. Um, but that doesn't bother me, because of two things. Number one, the Sabat actually has another idea. I just realised my microphone's all the way up here. That's better, isn't it? But yeah, the Sabat actually has a different idea. Um, the Anarchs don't really. Um... And also the Sabat act as the antagonists of the setting, whereas the um, Anarchs are almost portrayed as underdog heroes a lot of the time. Um, as kind of, uh, they're, they're, a lot of them are portrayed, there are plenty of villains in the Anarchs, and the Anarchs do a lot of shitty things, because quite frankly, um, I was about to say there's good guys in the Sabat, but there aren't. Um, but... <laughs> 
Uh, but, you know, there's the heroes and villains in the Camarilla, there's heroes and villains in the Anarchs. Um, vampires are ultimately people, but with, you know, some slightly shit, but some, you know, notably shittier impulses because of what they need to do to survive. Um, so, you know, they are as varied as people. Um, but the Anarchs annoy me specifically because they don't have another idea. They don't really have an opposing ideology except fuck you, dad. Um... And they, in a lot of cases, are just incredibly naive. Um, if the Anarchs had their way, the Camarilla would be over and done with. There would be no Camarilla. No one would be kicking down their door, telling them what to do. No one would be telling them who to sire, or whether or not they're allowed to sire. Um, no one would be telling them they're not allowed to break the masquerade. No one would be telling them, you know, where they're allowed to live. Um, or, you know, what belongs to who. And no one would be giving them orders. The problem is is that they still believe in a lot of the laws of the Camarilla, they just don't want them to be enforced. Um, the Anarchs believe that there should be a limit of vampire population. It's just, they're like, not in my backyard. You know, it's that, yeah, we should, you know, it's that notion of, yeah, we should take guns away from people, but not my guns, I need them. That's basically their view. Um, that people should there should be a limit of the vampire population because of course there should they they rely on secrecy and they eat people they eat people's blood and if there's too many of them an entire city is going to develop fucking anemia um, and as such people are going to get suspicious inquisitors are going to start showing up you know um so yeah there should be a limit of the vampire population and vampires should need to be specifically raised into the society so that they know how to avoid detection for the same reason bodies are going to start showing up um inquisitors are going to start sniffing around vampires are going to start dying on mass you know they believe that same thing with the masquerade they believe there should be a masquerade that you shouldn't necessarily be you know to quote jack you know outrunning the 1015 sacramento and you know juggling dumpsters you know you shouldn't be doing that um they just believe no one should be enforcing that they, they uh, you know they believe you shouldn't just be randomly killing people and that people should have territory they just don't think anyone except for the individuals should be enforcing these rules and they assume that vampires uh will you know have a bit of enlightened self-interest in this way and um basically obey these laws naturally which is absolutely fucking mental, and this is why I can't stand them. Because here's the thing, as I as I've said, as I will, as I've said before, as I will say many times, I am in that setting. As far as that setting is concerned, I'm a cami, I'm a cape. I I believe the Camarilla is the objectively best choice. Do I believe they're perfect? No definitely not. The Camarilla is oppressive in a lot of ways. The Camarilla is corrupt as fuck. Um, depending on which city you're in, the Camarilla could be outright evil. You know, there are some cities where the Anarchs basically have a lot of a good point because the Prince is a fucking shitheel or the Primogen are mad. You know, um, there are reasons for the Anarchs to rebel against them in certain places. But overall, the Camarilla is necessary because we see in the setting over and over and over again that you cannot fucking trust vampires. Vampires are deceitful, two-faced, impudent, impulsive, immortal, idiot children. And I'm not talking about parties. I'm not talking about player characters. I'm talking about the fucking NPCs. You know, the the first set of vampires, you know, you, you couldn't even trust them to behave right from the get-go. The Antediluvians, the third generation of vampires, there's a grand total of 13 of them, and they're really early on. They are essentially the, they, they are, for all intents and purposes, in terms of modern vampires, they're the fathers of the modern vampires. And they were a massive problem to the point at which they just randomly killed loads of people for no reason. And when they wake up again, when Gehenna comes, they do the same shit again. You know, they beg you know, Cain couldn't be- it, Cain couldn't be trusted! The first vampire! He murdered his brother! You know, vampires can't be trusted! They are deceitful, impulsive children. 
um, driven by dark desires. Essentially, they can't be trusted for the same reason why people can't be trusted, why normal human beings cannot be trusted without some kind of law and order. If people could be trusted en masse without some kind of law and order, um, we wouldn't need governments. Uh, what's the phrase? If all men were angels, no government would be necessary. That's the same for vampires. If all vampires were angels, the Camarilla wouldn't be necessary. Unfortunately, vampires are literally shittier people with a lot more powers and a hell of a lot more at stake when they misbehave. Because when they misbehave, they risk their entire species being wiped out because they draw too much attention to their own existence and inquisitors show up. The fact that the Anarchs are so naive, so just short-sighted as to think that that people would just behave if there wasn't some consequences for misbehaving. Um, someone trying to, basically some watchful eyes keeping them in line. I mean, the Sabbat exist. The Sabbat are basically the walking evidence that the Camarilla is necessary because the Sabbat are formally out, completely outside of Camarilla control and explicitly murder people en masse, explicitly ignore the masquerade, explicitly do a lot of horrible evil shit. And they're the second most powerful group of vampires in the world. It's the Camarilla, then them. You know, that's your other option. That, because th they just form basically an evil, tyrannical, murderous, barbarous nightmare. That's what vampires, that's what a lot of vampires will do if there isn't some kind of rule. I mean, even, I mean, how many people actually get punished? How many, even just, just think about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. How many vampires do you run into, either aligned with the Sabbat or aligned with the Camarilla or completely unaligned? Um, how many do you run into that are doing stupid things? How many? Loads. So many. You have the Cult of the Ninth Circle, who are not Sabbat aligned, they're not Anarch aligned, and they're not Camarilla aligned, who, um, if not for the player character, were like very close to causing a huge masquerade breach by possibly releasing a zombie plague. On the, on the world. Um, the Anarchs themselves send you to police uh, one of, you know, a, a ghoul that belongs to one of their members. Granted, that member is dead, but, like, that ghoul immediately starts breaking the masquerade. And guess what? They send you in as essentially a heavy, acting essentially in the same capacity that a sheriff or someone doing a job for one of the primogen would be serving they essentially use you as the unofficial, you know, bitch slap of law. They want, they, they essentially, they want the same thing. They want the same rules that the Camarilla believes in. Um, but they don't want anyone enforcing it. And I understand why they're opposed to the Camarilla, because as I said, in a lot of cases, the Camarilla is incredibly corrupt. In fact, by definition, it's corrupt, because it inherently um, essentially has this inherent hierarchical structure which basically means that the oldest vampires who are already in power are always going to be in power unless you kill them um and it's really hard to kill them because the older a vampire is the more powerful they tend to be literally as well as politically um though i'd also argue that's just a natural consequence of the way vampires work because again um the anarchs though they have no formal structure um do have powerful figures a lot of whom tend to be fairly old um, not necessarily ancient. I mean, Jack um, from VTMB is very old. Um, he's from the Golden Age of Sail. He's not powerful, but that's because he's, you know, a literal anarchist. I'd say he's more anarchist than Anarch, um, especially actually in L.A. by Night, the um, actual game book in which he is literally an agent of chaos who just wants to see the world burn. You, he, It's really weird what they did with him in VTMB. I love him. He's a great character in VTMB, but he's basically explicitly evil <laughs> in um, the actual L.A. by Night book. Um, he's deliberately siring Thinbloods to try and create Gehenna. Like, that level of he wants to destroy the world level of evil and they just kind of made him this jolly guy who i i guess hangs out with kane i don't i don't fucking know um i'll be surprised if he's not in vtmb2 by the way i will be very surprised if he's not in vtmb2 um who am i talking about jack or kane honestly both of them um <laughs> but yeah like you know who's i'm trying to think who the most prominent you know, the two most prominent Anarchs are, I believe, the two oldest ones we meet. Um, the two oldest Anarchs we meet. Um, and those are um, the Baron of Hollywood, 
who I believe is from like the 30s, and Nines, who's from the Great Depression. The other Anarchs we meet, because Anarchs do tend to be quite young. Um, the other Anarchs we meet are all younger than them, and strangely, the oldest ones are in power. Hmm. How odd. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're just hypocrites. Um, they're just massive hypocrites. It's, it's basically my problem with them. Um, because they, they're they naive fools who believe that vampires will just f follow the better angels of their nature, despite living in a world that provides them with nothing but a mountain of proof to the contrary. Um, but they still hold on to that. And again, the Camarilla is honestly worth anger, because again, it's oppressive, and it's stagnant, and it's corrupt. But unfortunately, it's the best choice. Um, unless... If the Anarchs... I would have a lot of respect for the Anarchs um, if they essentially attempted to build... Not not to get rid of society, vampire society, but to build a new vampire society where the only enforcement, the only hi hierarchical structure, exists literally, purely, um, to enforce those laws. Un unfortunately, they don't. Um, they just kind of unofficially enforce them. Um, while claiming that no one should be enforcing them, while themselves enforcing them just kind of off the books. And they seem to think that if they enforce those rules off the books, it doesn't count. It does count, and it makes them hypocrites. Um, that being said, I will play ca I will play an art characters. Um, I have uh, at the past. I, I In fact, a lot of my VTM uh, characters have had Anarch sympathies. Um, Mastiff, who I've mentioned in a Tabletop Tall Tales before, he... Uh, had a lot of Anarch sympathies. I played a really punk rock Nosferatu called Bertie, um, who himself, again, had a lot of Anarch sympathies. Um, Anarchs can be a fun thing to play because they uh, essentially can behave as if they have a lot more freedom. Um, because even though they are technically members of the Camarilla, a lot of the time, depend if the Anarch presence is strong enough, um, the Camarilla won't actually try to enforce their laws on them, except in the most extreme cases, because of the political fallout of enforcing those laws. We see precisely that issue in VTMB, where essentially because of the strength of the Anarchs in that territory, even though the Camarilla considers them formally as members of the Camarilla, it's only when Lacroix believes that Nines has killed a Primogen, um, or this claims he believes that Nines has killed a Primogen, um... That it's only then that any law actually applies to them. You know, he literally he literally backs down from applying a basic Camarilla law to a member of the Camarilla because Nines calls it bullshit at the beginning of the game. He was definitely going to execute you. The Anarchs threw a fit, and because of their political power, the Camarilla backed down. Um, and allowed this vampire, who by rights should not have existed, um, who should have been executed under Camarilla law, they allowed them to live. Um, literally because they didn't want to start a fight with the Anarchs. Um, I would have more sympathy for them if they actually had an idea, but they are the literal, they are the purest example of um, characters who, of, 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 a fa of people who criticise and want to tear down a system, but don't have any kind of productive view of uh, what to replace it with. It's why I hate anarchists. It's, it's why, well, I don't hate anarchists, but it's why I think anarchists are stupid. Um, it's basically an extension of that. Like, yeah, it's fine to have problems with the system. The problem is there needs to be a system because humans are shit and vampires are even worse and more difficult to control than humans. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I don't like anarchs. Um, I will say, um, I do honestly actually like the look of the anarchs in V5 a lot more than I like them in uh, v20 it's one of the f it's one of the things i think v5 um it's actually done that's quite interesting um because obviously because the camarilla is a lot more restrictive and is no longer claiming all vampires as members of the camarilla and um, that means the anarchs are a lot bigger but it also means that the anarchs um are even less of a homogenous group and they already weren't much of one because again that essentially their only binding agreement the only thing that makes them anarchs is that they don't want the camarilla in uh, like telling them what to do um but in v5 because you know you could be declared an anarch by the camarilla um 
and because it is literally just a name for anyone who isn't in the Camarilla now and isn't in the Sabat, and frankly the Sabat doesn't really exist, that means there's a lot more interesting smaller local factions that can ri arise out of that, out of the Anarch population, which I think is quite interesting and could make for some very interesting uh, political situations in the cities. Because then you're not dealing with, you know, the monolithic Camarilla Sabat and then the bizarrely monolithic idiot Anarchs. You're dealing with, you know, a Camarilla stronghold, um, maybe some whispers of Sabat boogeyman, because in V5 the Sabat have kind of disappeared but are still striking from the shadows. And then a bunch of smaller, uh, more specific groups that are all technically Anarchs, but they're their own thing. I mean, just look at VTMB2's factions. Most of those factions would be considered Anarchs. Um, but rather than being considered... But the most of them would be Anarchs in V5. Um, but instead of just being homogeneously Anarchs, they're, you know, like the, the founders and all sorts of shit. And the Baron, which is a ludicrous name because there is literally a figure in, v in Vampire the Masquerade called the Baron. It's the progenitor of and leader of the bloodline of the Samdi. Um, which, by the way, my friend Mountor always called the Samidi. And I uh, never had the heart to correct him. <laughs> but yeah, so it's weird that there's also another character called the Baron in that. But, you know. um, but yeah, you know, you have all these factions. And that's quite interesting. That's something I quite like. Um, that's something that's enjoyable. And it adds, adds to a lot more creativity. Because frankly, especially with the isolated city-state nature of Vampire the Masquerade, um, it's always struck me as odd that you did have these kind of semi-monolithic... Um, Camarilla, Sabat, and Anarchs, uh, when really, yeah, the Camarilla and the Sabat, they do kind of enforce it, it makes sense for them to be kind of monolithic, even though they are isolated, um, but the Anarchs, no one's enforcing it, so I don't know why they were kind of monolithic, so the idea of them being essentially Anarchs, essentially just being unaligned, almost like the new independent, um, and then having a bunch of factions within that. That's quite interesting. I quite like the look of that. Okay, um, I was expecting this to be 15 minutes. It's gone on for about, uh, 21. Um, I hope this was enlightening. I hope this explained why I don't like the Anarchs. Do you disagree with me? Tell me. Tell me why, and I'll fight you. No. Um, tell me why, and maybe we can have a conversation either in the comments or in uh, my Discord, which there is a link in the description to where you can see that. Um, I don't know what the next video is going to be. Um, actually, no. I believe I, I don't know when it's going to come out, but it should be a clan video on the Ravnos. Um, and I'm going to hate it, and it's probably not going to be that that long, because uh, Ethan does not like the Ravnos, so it's probably going to be... And I'm going to have to do a lot of research, because I also don't know much about the Ravnos, because what little I do know is why I don't like them. I frequently forget they exist. Every every time, like, normally, whenever they get mentioned, um, I go, Oh yeah, they're a thing. They're so minor, not a single one of them exists in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. As, <clears throat> as far as I'm aware, there are none in VTMB. There may be in VTM... Actually, no. They're not playable in VTMB 2 either, but there's literally, I do not think, a single Ravnos anywhere in VTMB, which is wild. Um, because they're not even a bloodline. They're one of the clans. You know, they're one of the 13 major clans, and not a single one of them ever turns up, or as even mentioned. Um, you could very easily... You could very easily go through multiple... In fact, I have gone through multiple campaigns of Vampire the Masquerade, and I have never met a Ravnos. Except for once, there was one where we did kind of some Gehenna stuff, because the Ravnos actually have something vaguely interesting going on with Gehenna, but um, we just met a lot of dead and dying ones <laughs> when we went to India briefly <laughs> in my uh, in uh, my campaign where I was playing as uh, Vladislav, my uh, Shemise, uh, my flesh-crafting Shemise anti-tribu. Um, I, think, I think one of my tabletop tall tales talks about that, so... Um, Though I talked about him. I don't think I talked about the Ravnos, because, again, they were a very small part of that. But, yeah, the next video should be the Ravnos. Not sure when it's going to come out. Uh, hopefully within the next month. Uh, but uh, in assuming that my motivation remains up uh, as it is right now. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you disagree with me, feel free to, uh, you know, talk it out with me in the comments or in my Discord, uh, which there is a link in the description uh, to that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, um... I'm